now the fourth American president to preside over war in Afghanistan, two Democrats and two Republicans. I will not pass this responsibly on, responsibility on to a fifth president. I will not mislead the American people by claiming that just a little more time in Afghanistan will make all the difference. Nor will I shrink from my share of responsibility for where we are today and how we must move forward from here. I am president of the United States of America, and the buck stops with me. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. That's why we're still there. We were clear-eyed about the risk. We plan for every contingency, but I always promise the American people that I will be straight with you. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. If anything, The developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. We were still 20 years now in Afghanistan. In this time, it was not gelungen. And so far, we must say that this was not a successful effort and that we have to learn from it. And our goals are also smaller, I think, in such efforts. Seit dem Abzug der ausländischen Truppen aus Afghanistan müssen wir erleben, wie die Taliban in geradezu atemberaubender Geschwindigkeit Provinz für Provinz, Stadt für Stadt wiedererobern und das ganze Land erneut unter ihre Kontrolle gebracht haben. Das ist eine überaus bittere Entwicklung. Bitter, dramatisch und furchtbar ist diese Entwicklung natürlich ganz besonders für die Menschen in Afghanistan. Mr. President, today I'm speaking on behalf of millions of people in Afghanistan whose fate hangs in the balance and are faced with an extremely uncertain future. I'm speaking for millions of Afghan girls and women who are about to lose their freedom to go to school, to work, and to participate in the political, economic, and social life of the country. I'm speaking for thousands of human rights defenders, journalists, academics, civil servants, and former security personnel whose lives are at risk for defending human rights and democracy. I'm speaking for thousands of internally displaced people who are desperately in need of shelter, food, and protection in Kabul and other places. We've witnessed time and again how Taliban have broken their promises and commitments in the past. We have seen gruesome images of Taliban's mass executions of military personnel and target killings of civilians in Kandahar and other big cities. Mr. President, we cannot allow this to happen in Kabul, which has been the last refuge for many people escaping violence and Taliban's revenge attacks. Kabul residents are reporting the Taliban have already started house-to-house searches in some neighborhoods, registering names and looking for people in their target list. There are already reports of target killings and looting in the city. Kabul residents are living in absolute fear right now. The Security Council and the UN Secretary General should use every means at its disposal to call for an immediate cessation of violence and respect for human rights and international humanitarian law. I'm always concerned for Julian's health. He's been having to go through incredible hardship for the seven years that he was in the Ecuadorian embassy. It was a small apartment, no outdoor space. He didn't have any sunlight for seven years. Um, And then he was dragged uh, to Belmarsh and he hasn't stepped outside Belmarsh other than in the courtroom. Uh, 
since April 2019. Belmarsh is a horrible, grim place that is, exists to isolate people, uh, to crush their hope. Uh, it has, I think, three times the average uh, prison suicide rate, um, three times more than the average uh, UK prison. Um, Julian's lost uh, a friend in Belmarsh prison in November. 2020 committed suicide uh, and that's because it's a terrible environment uh, and he has very little stimulation he describes it as a sensory deprivation he describes prison as a meat processing factory they just keep them alive tienen la posibilidad de caer en cuatro pecados cuatro cosas actitudes malas por no hablar en lenguaje teológico ¿no? cuatro, cuatro actitudes que los amenazan continuamente y de las cuales tienen que defenderse primero la desinformación o sea doy la noticia pero doy la mitad nomás ¿no? la otra mitad no la doy entonces eh, eso va contra el derecho de que tiene un uno que recibe noticias está informado, le informas la mitad, le informas mal. Esa es una de las desviaciones que ustedes tienen que cuidarse de no caer en ella. La segunda es la calumnia. ¿no? Hay nomás calumniar gente. Y hay medios de comunicación que calumnian sin ningún problema. No, pero ¿de dónde sacó eso usted? Ah, lo, lo vi en la televisión o lo leí en el diario. Pero eso no es, ah, lo dice el diario, claro. El Día Mundial de las Comunicaciones de la Iglesia Católica, el Papa Francisco se expresó acerca de los medios sociales y del Internet como un regalo de Dios. También dijo que los medios sociales digitales van tan rápido que necesitan una inyección de calma, reflexión y ternura, entendiendo que no se trata de una red de cables, sino de personas. El Papa también dijo que mientras los católicos deben valorar y defender sus ideas y tradiciones, no deben ser tan petulantes como para afirmar que solo ellos tienen la verdad absoluta. También volvió a denunciar la escalonada brecha entre los ricos y pobres, diciendo que no era raro ver a la gente sin hogar durmiendo en las calles en el resplandor de las luces de las ventanas de los almacenes opulentos y que el Internet podría ayudar a unir a la gente, pero que las comunicaciones digitales a menudo obstaculizan el conocerse unos a otros. Y para esto las personas deben tratar de ser más amistosas en el entorno digital, no solo tolerar a la gente, sino escuchando y tratando de entender sus diferentes puntos de vista. El Papa, el Papa que quiere decir hoy que tenemos que tratar de estar más cerca y más unidos. Es por eso que los muros que nos dividen pueden ser superados, dice el Papa, solo si estamos dispuestos a escuchar a los demás y aprender el uno del otro. El Papa Francisco se reunió con 7.000 miembros de la Sociedad de San Pablo por el centenario de su fundación. Son religiosos y religiosas que se dedican a evangelizar a través de los medios de comunicación. Francisco les dijo que en su trabajo tengan siempre presente la unidad de la Iglesia y que no busquen dividir. Mai favorire i conflitti, mai scimmiotare quelle, quelle media di comunicazione che soltanto cercano lo spettacolo dei conflitti. También les pidió que no busquen solo. Mundial de las Comunicaciones de la Iglesia Católica.